The following video was recorded on location in my state-of-the-art office in the corner of my first floor apartment. If you like what you're about to hear, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in the upper right corner. Hello? Hello, how you doing? You alright? Sean here. Oh, hi, how's it going? Yeah, sorry, I'm a little late. Uh, the other thing ran over a bit, so I do apologize. Oh, not a problem. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. I've been a tremendous fan of all the bands that you've been a part of, and it's an honor to be able to help promote the brand new album from Lonely Robot. Thank you. That's very kind of you. So, how did this new album come to be? Uh, well, um, I don't know. Uh, the contract is for three albums. There had to be a number two, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I can tell you how the first one came to be, um, or how the old thing came to be. That's probably an easier question. So it's basically, I was writing a third it bites um, um, with, let's say, third. Depending on how you look at things, if you validate it bites as being a brand generally, the sixth it bites album, or if you think of it bites with me fronting it as a different thing than the third it bites album. So we were working on a third it bites album, and. Yeah, it wasn't going brilliantly. I think I got a bit disillusioned with it all after we did the Map of the Past album because I just think it was nothing to do with the band or the people in the band. It's just, uh, you know, third party involvement kind of tended to sort of derailed it a little bit for me. And we were starting to write a third album and then kind of uh, the phone rang and Fish wanted John Beck to go on tour with him uh, as a keyboard player, which he did for about a year. So that gave me the perfect opportunity to go, right then, I'm not doing this It Bites album, so what am I going to do now? So Thomas Farber at the label suggested that I do something on my own. And that's how Lonely Robot came to be. And I actually thought about doing it for a little while. Didn't know it was going to be called Lonely Robot, though I just was, you know, doing something on my under my own steam. So that that's how the, the, uh, the whole, the wheels went into motion to start this whole thing off. Oh, that, you know, it's it's amazing how situations like that, especially when it comes from third parties, can lead to someone making their own music, in a sense, and then, like, creating some amazing music out of it as well, because I love the first album to death, but, you know, just the new one, it's just, it's really everything that I was really hoping that you could pull off. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Yeah, it's, um... Yeah, well, it's funny, because it actually was supposed to be, it was supposed to sort of come out in October of last year, but um, I kind of got a really bad throat infection, so I didn't sing for uh, about three months, and then it, I missed my deadline for last year, and and then so it kind of, I've forgotten all about it until now, or until sort of, well, a couple of weeks ago when I started sort of doing the, the press campaign for it, but uh, yeah, it's I, I'm very proud of it. I mean, I kind of, I had, as I said, I had forgotten all about it, and, and, and now it's kind of, it's like uh, asking questions about it. It's like trying to remember. Uh, <laughs> trying to remember you something you wrote in the Times crossword a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that said, you know, like uh, now that you've had this time, especially with press being able to go back to the album, how are you feeling about it now? Um, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, when I lost, I, I remember when I sort of had my throat infection, I kind of listened back to it stupidly and I kind of had a bit of a massive crisis on, is this any good? And, well, I mean, is anything any good? It's the sound of the people that listen to it <laughs> decide whether it's any good. I mean, some people think uh, the Sex Pistols' first album is a work of genius, and some people think it's just a row. I mean, it's all relative, I suppose. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I am pleased with it. As I say, it was a long time ago now in my mind because I kind of tend to move on from these things fairly quickly when I finish them. But yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud of it. I certainly think it's, a, it's an improvement on the first one. It, well, people always say that, don't they? No one ever says, "Oh, here's my latest album." Uh, it's actually shitter than the last one we did the, the first one I was amazing and I just wanted to keep playing that forever but I had to do another one well actually I do know there was this one guy called Sean Smith in a band called The Blackout that I mixed once and he said I don't know why we had to do another album I quite like the last one we did but apparently we do so and this one's okay I suppose <laughs> and that kind of that kind of level of honesty I find quite refreshing but yeah no I'm, I'm pleased with this I, I think it scans as a whole you know from track to track I think it runs it's, it has a bit of a smoother ride so, yeah, I am pleased with it from that point of view. Yeah, I can definitely say that as well from a fan perspective. I mean, being able to go from start to finish, I mean, there's so many great peaks and valleys musically. Lots of great heavier moments, lots of great melodic, mellow moments. It just makes for a great album experience. Um, y uh, yes. Um, well, thank you. Yes, it's uh, dynamics. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, I, I kind of find that that's kind of... Uh, 
Yeah, dynamics. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's a lot. Of, I, mean, I like a lot of uh, metal bands. I used to like a lot of metal bands. I think that's kind of what's missing. I think that's the one good thing about progressive rock. You do got a lot, get a lot more ebb and flow than, than um, you know, you used to. So, yeah, I'm pleased with that. It's cool. You know, in speaking of that, I mean, you've been able to do a lot of production and mixing when it comes to, like, uh, more modern metal bands. What is it like to be able to go into that venture, you know, doing something that you're not normally known for playing? Well, I mean, I, I was doing that first, so it's kind of the opposite way around, you know. I was, um, you know, it kind of accidentally happened into the world of progressive rock. You know, but it's kind of like at some point I've been leading a double life. There's sort of one half of my, my world I'm sort of known for sort of doing architects and stuff like that, and the other half I'm sort of known for sounding like, uh, you know, like poor man's Peter Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's great to see that diversity as a musician and someone that also works in front of and behind uh, the recording setup because it really opens up your mind to a lot of different aspects of what you can do. I mean, when someone is just a musician, they don't always know everything that goes into the production side and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it certainly gives you a fresh perspective. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's been helpful over the years. I mean, I tell you, it's, it, I think, you know, there is an overlap, I think, from like... Uh, doing uh, producing bands like architects you know you get used to the sound of dj and guitars and before you know it you start doing the same thing yourself you know otherwise everything i did would be in, in, in concert tuning and that would be the end of that you know but i kind of i like bands like car park north and stuff like that that has like kind of really dj and guitars so that kind of appeals to me you know but then again i like uh, film soundtracks so you know I got the whimsy of film soundtracks and and uh, and you know and uh, and and sort of uh, drop tune metal so yeah that's kind of an amalgamation of everything i kind of like you know do you ever see yourself incorporating that more into your style like um with any more solo projects or maybe the third lonely robot album adding more of those uh, drop tune guitars or metal stylings yeah i think so i mean i, I too tend to always lean towards the 80s uh, i just kind of tend to stick chorus on everything and so maybe uh yeah <laughs> it's fun to at my old age to contemporize myself try and be down with the kids man <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah it's um yeah i don't know it's um yeah i mean as i say you draw influences from wherever and whenever so uh yeah i, I think that um yeah i, I think i certainly next time i come to if i come around to doing this i certainly don't want it to be a carbon copy of this one that's for sure yeah and you know it's it's great to see all the great projects that you've been a part of lately i mean whether you're helping with production or mixing or you're playing live or you're recording new albums i mean you've been keeping really busy lately yeah, yeah, I'm not as busy. As I say, I don't have a proper job. I don't work in a bank, so it, it's it's um you know if all you ever do is like music and things involved in music, it you know it's uh, it's there are 24 hours in a day, although it doesn't seem like it at the moment. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's easy to get things done. You know, I must admit, there's a lot of people in in progressive rock bands that you know, what I call weekend warriors, who are like hobby bands, you know, and then I can understand getting an album done under those conditions. You know, if you if you are a chartered accountant and, and, and recording at weekends, that might take time, but you know, all I ever do is music. So there we go. It doesn't seem like that unfathomable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so with that said, I mean, with the album coming out on the 28th through Inside Out, what do you got planned next? Uh, I'm going to go sailing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on holiday in four years, so I think I'm going to go sailing as soon as, as, soon as it, you know, my, my work commitments and stuff die down a bit. I, you know, summer's on the way. Uh, it's starting to get quite pleasant here in England, so uh, I'm just going to go and hit the coast as soon as I can. I don't really have any plans for anything musically beyond what I've just, you know, beyond the press. You know, there's a few gigs I've got to fulfil, but beyond that, I just, you know, I could do with a bit of time off, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, with all the stuff that's been going on in recent times, I mean, it's great to be able to go out and enjoy life and do what you want to do. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you know that's a healthy balance that needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, what do they say in The Shining? You remember the film with Jack Nicholson? Oh, yes. All work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and actually psychopathic with it, you know. <laughs> Although that could lead for some very interesting uh, music when you have that kind of mindset that Jack Nicholson had in The Shining. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have liked to put that guy's mind to music, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, you mentioned that you do have some uh, gigs that are going to be coming up 
with Lonely Robot. How does it feel to be able to play these songs in a live setting? Uh, I don't know yet because I haven't done it, but I'd imagine that um, it's good to have two albums worth of material because I always find that when you've like you start something, and you've only done one album, you end up covering loads of songs that you probably wouldn't otherwise cover. It's kind of how accidentally It Bites came to be because we did this thing called Kino, and then we only had one album, and we tried to do concerts, and we realised, you know, progressive rock fans kind of want to hear more than forty-five minutes worth of music. So then we started playing It Bites songs to, and, and Marillion songs, and then eventually somebody had the bright idea of, why don't we just put It Bites back together? And, then, <laughs> and that was the end of that. Uh, so with that in mind, I mean, like having uh, two albums worth of material to choose from, how are you going about picking out a set list? Um, I, um, I don't know. Uh, we, we, I kind of learned three of what I thought the strongest songs from the new album. I don't think anybody went, but when the first time we do a gig with this, no one will have heard the new album, so we're just going to play three of the strongest songs we're going to do Everglow in Floor Green and Sigma and you know and then you know from here on out I don't know I haven't even got around to thinking about it yet it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a new thing so we shall see uh, it, it's great I mean it's it's awesome to see that uh, these songs are getting uh, proper promotion in a live setting I mean it you know some bands never get the opportunity to be able to promote an album live and it's great to see that this album is getting some shows out of it mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, only, well, I'm at the moment only planning on doing a couple. I, I, you know, I don't really enjoy the process that much. So, you know, I always liked it to be a bit of an event so that when I do finally kind of get around to doing it, um, you know, I, I, I did a show at the Scala and it was kind of, I wanted it to be Pink Floyd on a Blue Peter budget. So, I, you know, like, you know, he's trying to do something epically on the cheap. And I, I, the appeal, I, I don't know, as I get older, I, I, I kind of, I don't really enjoy playing live as much as I used to. I just quite like being, you know, noodling away on my own recording stuff um, but you know obviously it's important to do shows so I just want to make sure that they're just sort of well promoted and what you would consider to be events you know and honestly that that makes the experience that more special I mean there are so many bands out there that just live their entire life on the road and the only time that they're not on the road they're recording and you know when you get to that point in life it's nice to be able to just work on the music that you want to make record that uh, production work if you want to go into that venture and when you do have the opportunity to play one or two shows to be able to promote something that you're doing it just it's nice to have that one experience and then be able to go back and do what you need to do yeah yeah I mean yeah, I think I think I think you know you can saturate the thing, and of course you know in England you know people are a bit apathetic about going and seeing live concerts. So if you make plan it like an event, a bit of a happening, you know I think it's more like that people will attend and, and, and commit it to their memory. You know I, I kind of see so much of people like standing at gigs, you know, videoing them on their phones and stuff. I think people actually forget to remember remember the experience. They want to sort of capture it on a lo-fi sense and for posterity. But I think the act, you know, the actual act, act of memory is far greater. You know. A far greater thing as it were yeah that is one of the downsides to technology i mean when you go online and see all these uh, very low quality very low audio quality uh, live songs i mean for some people it makes them want to go see it live but then for so- other people it makes it never want to see those live because of how it sounds well yeah i mean i don't really know what to say about that it's it's um i don't know i think i think mm, it's, a good, it's a good point I, um, I don't know. I think it's such a, you know, I, there is a, there is such a cliche about, yeah, well, band, record album, tour, record album, tour. It's almost like, you know, the whole thing of, of you know, people are willing to accept that music is about Spotify now and people don't buy records anymore. Really. Why, why, why do we have to do this? I mean, obviously, these days, people make money off touring and selling merch, but, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, the, you know, I remember Mike Oldfield used to just record stuff and refuse to go on tour. Maybe that was a better way forward about it, you know. Well, I, I can definitely say from uh, a musician standpoint and also from a fan aspect of, of yours, you know, it's like, I, I love the approach that you're going with it. I mean, going, recording the album, doing the press for it, maybe doing a show or two, and then just going off into different ventures because that keeps your mind staying creative and that way you don't feel like you have to abandon a project because there's so much pressure behind it. Well, there is that, you know, um, I, as I say, there's nothing to say that you, you know, um, I don't know, I just enjoy the recording experience. I can't say that I massively enjoy playing playing live and I you know I, I quite like playing for other you know like playing at Frost is fun but I, you know I, I do find like the experiences I've had so far of, of doing live stuff with this have, have been pretty stressful 
I mean, I do take it all very personally, so maybe <laughs> if I could feasibly take a step back from it, then I would. But, you know, at the moment, I have to say, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm holding my cards close to my chest when it comes to doing live dates, you know. Well, hopefully, I mean, I mean, with these uh, handful of shows that are coming up, I mean, hopefully with the fan experience, with uh, setting up all the gear, everything that's going on with it, hopefully it'll be more of a pleasant experience because it, it, it'd be sad to see uh, the album have a lingering effect of like a bad live experiences. Well, uh, you know, as I say, it, you know, it's it's not a given. You have to do that, but you know, it's it's. I think I think if uh, you know, and again, you've got to remember that you know, supply meets demand, and if, if you if you if you uh, if you don't give supply, then people's demand increases. So maybe just keep music and just keep making albums, and maybe in about ten years, do one gig, you might get <laughs> a handful <laughs> of appreciative uh, punters. We shall see. <laughs> Oh, that is, that is a great way to look at it. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, uh, John, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Uh, again, it was a tremendous honor to be able to help promote the brand new album from Lonely Robot coming out April 28th through Inside Out Music. I absolutely love the album, and I hope others, when they get a chance to... Thank you very much, mate. That's very kind of you. Thank you, and I appreciate your support. Oh, not a problem. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I haven't brought up yet? Um, uh, not really. No. Um, uh, I just to anybody that um, reads this, uh, just I hope that uh, I hope that they um, they enjoy it. It's uh, uh, you know I'm certainly pleased that it's I'm pleased it's finally going to see the light of day.